Welcome to Reduce Your Stress with Tim Ringgold. I'm a board certified music therapist, author, and expert on how to use music to relieve stress fast. This podcast is sponsored by McConnell Music Therapy Services, Inc., where they believe in the power of music to transform people and communities. Based in Northern California, their board-certified music therapists support people of all ages and abilities within hospitals, schools, corporations, and communities using music experience to connect, express, and de-stress. Visit them at mcconnellmts.com or their Facebook page, McConnell Music Therapy. This episode of Reduce Your Stress with Tim Ringgold is also sponsored by Dr. Nisi, trainer and certifier of master and executive coaches, because she believes every person, every relationship, every business, and your finances should be extraordinary. Find out more about Dr. Nisi Moore and the Life Coaching Institute at www.drnisi.com. That's D R N E E C I E dot com. I was out of control. I was a guitarist in a rock band. And let's just say the phrase sex, drugs, and rock and roll is in that order for a reason. (laughs) I thought that was the reason people got in to rock and roll. And the day I walked into my first 12-step meeting in 2003, that did not equal happily ever after, folks. That's when the work began. Even in recovery... I liked the adrenaline rush that I'd feel getting close to the edge, but not falling over. Problem was, eventually, I fell over. And often, I felt like I got pushed over by the hand of stress. When stress would strike, I'd get angry, then I'd get resentful, and then I'd feel entitled. So I ended up practically jumping and falling and crashing and relapsing. And it took me years of not only working my own program, but working in the field of recovery, reading books, speaking at events, and listening to other experts that I realized I didn't have to live at that edge. I do not believe in the phrase, no matter how far down the road you go, you're always the same distance from the ditch. Because I remember what it was like at that edge. And I know what it feels like today, which is different. I'm not staring over the edge anymore. I mean, it's still over there, but it's at a much safer distance. And if you want to experience a safe distance from your edge, whatever that is for you, it's possible. And myself and many of the speakers at my upcoming event are living a safe distance from our edge, experiencing levels of life that just were not possible before. And I really want you to feel this freedom too, this safety. So that's why I put together the next summit, which is called the Stress Elimination Summit Recovery Edition from January 25th to the 29th, 2021, this month. Over five days, we've got 28 speakers helping you to become stress resilient. That means staying safe from relapse, whatever that means for you. And the best part is it's totally free. And you can get your free ticket at www.stresseliminationsummit.com. Join us. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Reduce Your Stress with Tim Ringgold. It's so great to be with you. I'm so glad you're here. Today's interview is from my last summit. Uh, with a dear friend of mine and a a professional vocal coach and my personal vocal coach named Orgina Rose. Orgina is going to shift how you think about your voice as a tool of empowerment and stress relief. It's a profound conversation. And this woman, you're just going to be so excited to listen to her. She's amazing. I love her. I'm so grateful she's in my life and I'm grateful she's about to enter yours. You can uh, learn more about Orgina at chakrasing.com, and that's C-H-A-K-R-A-S-I-N-G.com, and I'll put that in the show notes. 
and sit back, relax, and enjoy this beautiful woman. Orgina Rose is a dynamic and inspirational singer, songwriter, producer, motivational speaker, and award-winning voice expert, and my personal vocal coach. Orgina has appeared on Oprah, The Today Show, The Tony Awards, PBS, Broadway, Carnegie Hall, and Conan. She has sung with artists such as Patti LaBelle, Audra McDonald, and Leah Michelle of Glee. She's also the CEO of Sacred Rose Productions, where she writes and records not only her own music, but produces music for businesses as well as transformational video and TV. To give back, she founded the Global Artists Academy, which offers courses, workshops, and programs in her mission to heal, empower, and transform through the arts. Orgina, welcome to the summit. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Tim. <laughs> it's so good to be here with you. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of the summit. It's fantastic. Thank it, you. It is truly my pleasure. I think we're going to out, you know, outdo it. Like, no, no, it's my pleasure. No, no, it's my pleasure. No, and no, my pleasure. No, it's mine. <laughs> for, for everyone who, I'm going to set us up on uh, like side by side view here because our time together whenever we're together is some of the funniest time of my life and the banter is non-stop and like ping pong so rather than having the uh video go back forth back forth between us like just making each other laugh in stitches um i'm just going to put our side by side here so that we can jump right in uh and before we begin since i know you've had some pretty epic gigs and tours etc what was your favorite concert to play my favorite concert, I would have to say, is uh, was Carnegie Hall, and that was the second time, uh, because the first time I was actually there when I was quite young as part of a choir, uh, and I got to sing one little line as a solo, but many years later when I was there, I was the soloist, so that was a real triumph. Uh, a real wonderful moment to stand there on that stage singing summertime. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. Yeah. Now yeah. you are you are clearly at home with your voice. Um, was it always that way? And if not, <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> no, it absolutely wasn't always that way. I was actually so plagued with fear and insecurity around my voice that I actually stopped singing for three years after Broadway and Carnegie Hall. Now, Wait, I had been told, I know, that's pretty crazy, right? <laughs> I stopped singing. I actually thought I would just never sing. I was done uh, because I was, I had hit a wall. I didn't know it, uh, but it actually went way back to when I was much younger. I'd been told that I couldn't sing by a teacher, right? Uh, and thankfully, I was a little bit stubborn enough that it actually made me set out to prove her wrong. <laughs> and I did that. I got to four years later, sing in front of her as the soloist. I had won a bunch of, you know, awards and things, and I watched her mouth drop to the floor. And that was another amazing moment to just really, you know, say, no, you don't get to determine what I can and can't do and to really stand up for myself. So that was a wonderful, wonderful moment. But I had to work through my fears. I had to face and release them. And when I did, my confidence soared. I was finally feeling really solid and grounded. And I sang from a completely different place than I ever had before. Uh, and, and through that process, I learned that there's a gift in fear that actually turns it into fuel. Now that one's my favorite piece. There's a gift in there. There's a reason why we're afraid. Uh, and I teach this uh, in my book, From Fear to Freedom, as well as in my Chakra Sing course. Okay. All right. Wow. That's amazing. I never yeah. would have guessed. Never would have guessed, right? <laughs> and I think that's, thank you for sharing that story because so many times we we see someone like their their online persona or their on stage persona and we think that's the whole story. <laughs> And then we compare right. ourselves to them and we say, well, there they are at their peak moment of preparation and performance, or if it's online, their curated moment, let's be honest. <laughs> right. And then we think that's the total, 
the totality of who they are and, and it's not. And so it's, it's always, I find it to be a revelation for me. Like when I heard that Whitney Houston hated the sound of her own voice, I was like, stop, right? stop. <laughs> I'm every right? woman, you know, like, no, right? <laughs> you know, like that's impossible. And then you hear these stories and you're like, thank you. Because, you know, the voice is so intimate. It's so personal. And I think, I know in my head, because you know, it's so weird because what you and I hear in our heads isn't what the world hears. So when we hear recordings of ourselves, we're like, what? That's not it at all. <laughs> I, I know. I used to, th I used to think there was a, a de-scrambler box from like the outside of my mouth to people's ears that somehow scrambled it and made it sound good. So that by the time people heard it, it sounded amazing because people would come up to me and go, oh my god that was the most amazing thing i heard they'd be in tears and i'm on the inside going that was the worst thing ever out of my mouth ever right and so i thought what is happening here and actually led to a joke my only joke that i can tell i'm not so great at it but i can tell this one it's i used to say this to my singers why are we so neurotic <laughs> and they'd say why and i'd say because we're the only musicians trapped inside our instruments right because everyone else every other musician plays something outside themselves so if it doesn't sound good it's the instrument or they made a mistake on the instrument but when it's our voice oh my goodness it goes to the depths of our soul how it affects us you know yes. and that's why it's so much deeper so much more powerful yeah yeah i really appreciate that because I, I don't hear my voice as an instrument. I hear it as me, right? And when I went to school for voice, I remember one of the vocal teachers one day discussing another singer and, and the vocal teacher said, she has a lovely instrument. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, that pretentious crap. What are you talking? Oh my God, you are just the height of elitism. And then I realized, I was like, oh, uh -huh. that's, that's right. how you can separate, you know, and be you know, become a little bit objective and have some distance from this experience. So, you know, so many people are intimidated by the sound of their own voice. Mm -hmm. Is is mm -hmm. there a way that we can begin to shift that? Absolutely. And and yes, it is so sad. So many people hate their voice. When I do workshops, I'll ask folks and about 80 to 90% of people in the room will say they've had some negative comment about their voice and it shut them down in some way. So we can, however, begin to shift it with a few things. And so these are really powerful part of the tools that I've used. Uh, the first one is what I call the 90-10 rule. And this was something my very first voice teacher taught me. And she literally said, singing is 90% mental. Think about that. 90% percent mental so it, it's like wait a minute what <laughs> it's 90 percent what you tell yourself right so when you tell yourself that note's too high or it doesn't sound good or all of those things then you're literally creating that your body will begin to contract and constrict and it will be too high for you it will be too hard for you so we are literally creating it and i know that that sounds a bit woo woo for some folks but I promise you every single time without fail, when I made simple shifts around this, and this is what I teach a lot of my students, things came out of my voice that I couldn't even believe, notes that I could hit, uh, ways that I could sing just flew out of me. And it was really astounding. You know, <laughs> I have so many stories, but one, I went and audition for this part and it really required a lot of belting. Now I had a lot of classical training and I had to teach myself how to belt and do it in a healthy way. Well, this part required all belting and belting high for the whole, <laughs> the whole show. And so I, I did my technique, I, you know, that I teach and sure enough, I got the part. But then I said, oh no, now I have to do it eight shows a week for three weeks for a whole month and i was like oh my goodness what did i do but then i had to actually keep it up and i'm telling you i made it through that entire run and my voice was actually stronger by the end and everyone really raved about the performances so this is a real truth and it's and i love my students because they do it and they are surprised and shocked themselves about what comes out of their mouth
So that's the number one thing is, is start shifting from using your doubting voice to your divine voice. Now, this is really big. I love, I know, right? I love the eyebrow there. So, <laughs> so instead of that doubting, judging, I can't do it, I don't know, eh, eh, voice, shift into a voice of a higher power, a higher vision, a higher perspective that says, you are enough. You are worthy. You are wanted. You belong. You matter. You're loved. You can do it. This is literally how I've lived most of my life is that last statement was said to me almost regularly is that you can do anything you put your mind to. That was my godmother who would just constantly say that. And then there's a, a, you know, a scripture that says the same thing. And so that's what has carried me so much through my life. That's what carried me to be able to stand up and, and speak to and sing <laughs> despite what my voice teacher had told me. So this is that shift from the doubting voice to your divine voice that's in there. We, we talk about it. We say that still small voice, right? Oh, that something said I should go this way. Something said, something told me. We'll say something, right? Okay, then that's something. Begin to start shifting and listening and tuning into that more than the judgmental, critical, I can't do it voice, right? So that's the second thing. The third thing I'm going to talk about is celebrate what is good. Now, this, this ties in with that because what we are really good at, unfortunately, is really criticizing ourselves, being very judgmental. Oh, that didn't sound right. That was awful. It's too squeaky. It's too this. It's not enough that. And instead, why don't we put, our, put the bat down and do what we would do for a baby, learning to walk. Now, we don't pick up a bat and knock it upside and knock a baby down, right, for falling down. We celebrate the fact that it took a step. Even if it was for a split second, we celebrate that. So start, start shifting to celebrating what is good, what we can like, what we did do right, even if it's just completing, right? Just start celebrating and noticing what is good. And this is really, really huge because then when we do this, we can shift out of judgment and into observation right so like a mechanic we can see all of what happens with our voice as simple information like a mechanic does with a car we can release this kind of you know voice competition show mentality where someone's sitting and judging us all day right and we can actually see the voice as an instrument that if it cracks or if it does this or if it's kind of hard to hit this note or it wobbles here. We can just take that as information now that we can do something with. We can make some choices and adjustments with that information. Again, there's that space. So the beautiful thing is, you know, back to that 90-10 rule, the 10% is that the voice is this amazing, powerful instrument, right? And lots of people like your Whitney Houston, right, are showing it all the time. There are so many amazing voices out there. But it's, if you don't even believe it, you can't even see, right, and receive how amazing it is. So if you now see that it's a, an instrument that can do amazing things, giving you amazing information, aha, now that's a beautiful thing. Now you can interact from a different place with it. And this ties into one of the most powerful, powerful, powerful things that has sh changed my voice, my life, my everything, uh, and that of my students, especially when we kind of go this next level. And that is around recognizing that you have a unique divine voice print. Yeah, so just like your fingerprint, it's unique. It's yours, no one else has it. You have the same for your voice, yeah? And so that, voice print of yours though, just like your fingerprint, it has a lot of information about you. So you know how we all are, can be in a conversation and someone can say something, but their tone of voice kind of gives the feeling of something else. <laughs> you know, they might have said, oh, pass me that piece of paper, but if they said it with a little edge in the tone, you know, we can feel and hear that. Well, just how we get information like that, 
your divine voice print is telling more information about you, about your soul, about the state of your health, your physical, your mental well-being, simply from your voice. And this takes personal health and well-being to whole new levels. So I like to ask the question, what if? What if your voice is sound medicine? What if your voice is not just for speaking, not just for singing? What if you can use your voice for healing as medicine? So we've all heard the phrase, the eyes are the windows of the soul, right? Windows to the soul. Well, I say that your voice is the sound of your soul. Mm, yes. So we have been singing since birth. The first thing we did when we came out of the womb is we sang, right? Now we'll call it a cry, but it was extended sound of our voice. We sang. We took a breath and we sang, right? Tribes sing and have done so for for you know thousands of years. We are resonant beings. And you know, sound is the medicine of the past and the future. Uh, we know it about ultrasound. Uh, using high frequency sound waves to create an image right in the side of our bodies. So we're we're used to it already actually. Well there is the healing power of sound. It's been an integral part of civilization for years. The entire universe is in a state of vibration. This includes us, right? Our heartbeat. I know you really know about that. That's really fantastic. But every organ every cell, bone, tissue, the liquid in our body, our electromagnetic fields which surround the body all have vibratory frequency. And now if we're not resonating with some part of ourselves or our surroundings, then we become dissonant. And therefore, that's creating an unhealthy or illness in our body. So sound healing with our own voice can really provoke a deep state of relaxation. We are releasing emotional pain and the scars and fear and grief, loneliness, depression, all sorts of emotional in, uh, issues, right? Uh, even physical ailments, especially even just with the breath. Uh, in our one of our exercises, we've had people who couldn't feel, you know, they have cold hands, they don't have good circulation, their fingers, their hands have been you know, stiff or cold for years, and literally by the end of the session, they're warm. They can, they have movement. So physical ailments, aches and pains, muscular mobility, all sorts of issues can be alleviated by sound. And the beauty is with our voice, it's built in. So now it becomes our most powerful instrument for healing and well-being. And by connecting our voice to certain sounds, like the tones on the scale, right, of the piano, so by connecting them to your own body, your energy centers, known as chakras, you can create an immediate shift, just like listening to certain music or songs can create an immediate shift. And this is what we do in Chakra Sync. I'm, I put myself on mute there because that was just so good. Uh, that that is so amazing. Like the like the idea that the voice is an instrument for healing versus the cultural story that it's an instrument for art is transformational. Totally yeah. transformational. So that's just right there is mind blowing. Is there like we've like time flies when we're having fun, so we've only got uh, just a couple of minutes left, but is there kind yeah. of something uh, like an exercise or something brief that you can lead us through to kind of show us how to kind of tap in, just maybe, you know, falling in love, like reintroducing ourselves to our voice in a gentle way? Absolutely. I'll give something simple and actually it'll do three things. It'll show you how to strengthen your voice, how to keep it healthy, and fall in love with your voice yeah hey. and this all happens in our chakra sing mini course uh, which i'll be sharing with everyone but i'll do one exercise from that and it's the activation and it's super simple and super easy uh and all we're going to do is hum humming is one of the most powerful things simplest things that you can do to begin to shift 
and strengthen your own voice. So, but here's a, here's a different focus. So I'm just gonna play a note here. Yeah, so. So if we just simply hummed, yes? So if we, and instead of thinking or worrying about how we sound, we want to focus on how we feel. And we want to focus on the vibration, feeling it in our bodies, noticing where it feels strong or weak. And now again, you just have information to know which tones to use for rebalancing. So if we just worked our way up, and then breathe. Now, when we're doing this on a more intentional, in a more intentional way, we really focus on the breath. The breath is like gas to a car, right? So if you don't have gas in your car, you're not going to go very far. Same thing with our sound, our resonance. So we really focus on the breath first to lay that foundation. We stretch our bodies, we release tension in our bodies, which will help us to create our best sound and resonance. And then we really focus these tones into the parts of our bodies. And literally, I, I came upon this quite by accident, didn't even realize it until I started doing study later around the chakras. And that's when it was like, aha, this is why my students were having such incredible changes in their bodies, changes in their lives, miracles were happening, showing up, new jobs you know, raises, all sorts of amazing things were happening. So it was like, okay, something more than just singing is going on here. And it took a number of people to say that to me, like, you know, you're doing a whole lot more than just voice coaching. And so that was the beautiful wake up call for me. And as I dug deeper, I got to really understand what was happening. That's so brilliant. this is the first, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So you know what I'm excited about too is that you have donated the chakra sing, chakra raising, chakra sing, chakra sing, <laughs> the sing. syllable, got the right syllable there, <laughs> uh, to our VIPers. Uh, so it's one of the bonuses, ladies and gentlemen, in the VIP package is you're going to get Orgina's huh? course for how to do this. And that's included in the vault of goodies from the different uh, speakers that have donated. So I want to thank you again for that. How, um, real quick, uh, someone asked a question, one of our VIPers, it says, so the relaxation when singing, does this help with overcoming overactive nervous system? Does playing an instrument do this as well? And I'll let you uh, answer the singing part if you want, and I can tag in on the instrument. Fantastic. Absolutely. 100%. Your voice resonating on different tones will have an immediate effect on your nervous system, on your, you know, your breath. There are probably about a hundred different benefits, even just from the breath alone. But then when you compound it with your sound resonating, it's absolutely extraordinary. It can do amazing things for your body, uh, which again is, you know, in the course, it talks about this in the Stop Losing Your Voice ebook, as well as the Divine Voice Breakthrough Session, where we can actually analyze your voice and find out what frequencies are weak so that we can then give you what I like to call a tone vitamin with your own voice as to what to now sing or hum uh, to be able to start to bring your body back into balance. So absolutely, 100%. Brilliant. And the, and the, yeah, there's great studies on immune system improvement from singing, uh, in mm -hmm. using in, co in choirs and super fascinating mm -hmm. research. The mm -hmm. one caveat and an instrument play Ella who asked this question, uh, follows the same, uh, trajectory. There's just a context around play versus work. So playing an mm -hmm. instrument versus working an instrument. And so, some people can have performance anxiety because the context of their activity on yeah. the instrument is in order to perform rather than to express. Yeah. 
And so the one thing I like to remind people is when we're playing, we are literally just expressing, just releasing the energy and the emotion, just energy in motion that's in our bodies. When we are performing, we are doing a, that's a different, it's a different task. It's a different purpose, a different context. And so that can actually be anxiety producing. And I know as a performer and a musician, I've had my very, this instrument right here has released my anxiety and caused my anxiety based on the context. So I just need to throw that in there, that context is key. So awesome. Uh, Orgina, where can people find out more about you online? Absolutely, they can go to chakrasing.com. That's chakra and sing. All one word, chakrasing.com. Awesome. Orgina, it is always a delight. It's always so yeah. lovely to be with you. And so just getting to be with you again today, I just, I love that we had an excuse to hang out together. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Always a pleasure indeed. So good to see you and be with all of you, with you and all of the folks who are here. So thank you. You got it. Awesome. <sighs> I'm just going to take a nice yummy breath, a divine breath here, because I just there got go. to bring in my beautiful <laughs> coach and dear friend, Orgina. That was lovely. <sighs> Thanks so much for checking out this episode of Reduce Your Stress with Tim Ringgold. I've got a couple of resources for you, which you can find in the show notes or you can listen to right here. So check it out. If you enjoy the sound of my voice and you enjoy the sound of my guitar, imagine them put together. Go to sonicrecovery.com and take your very own relaxation vacation, where I take you out of the stress of the present moment and back in time to a time when you felt happy, healthy, safe, and sober, and then walk you through that memory so you can bring back those feelings into the challenges you're facing today. So go check that out. It's at sonicrecovery.com. If you're a healthcare worker in recovery, check out the Music in Recovery self-care guide for healthcare professionals that I created just for you. That's at hcp.sonicrecovery.com. And if you're a healthcare worker and you'd like more information about how to help your patients use music, you can check out the music medicine guide that I created just for you at musicmedicineguide.com. Lastly, if you enjoyed the pod and you haven't done it yet, would you just take a minute to rate and review it? It really only takes about 60 seconds, believe it or not. And it would go a long way to help us make more people know just how good this pod is, particularly for healthcare workers and their stress. Thanks again. See you next time.